Hi everyone, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloyTutors.com and in this video we're going to look at polymer making and disposal. So we're going to obviously look at the uh, ways in which we can uh, make the polymers in a greener way and we're going to look at the disposal of them as well. So for example burning, recycling and putting them into landfill and in particular we're going to have uh, a look at the difference between addition and condensation polymerization in terms of biodegradability as well. So we're going to start with uh, the making process. Now obviously plastics is used everywhere, they are becoming increasingly more uh, common and they're used in just about everything but the material that we use to make plastics is crude oil and that's a, uh, a resource that's rapidly running out so chemists are looking for new ways in which we can actually uh, make plastics from more renewable sources or through recycling. So just looking at the making side, uh, obviously using recycled materials will save um, things like crude oil, so you won't use as much. Um, using a catalyst uh, will actually reduce the amount of energy required in the manufacturing process of the plastic. So you could either use um, a lower temperature, which means less energy is needed to make them, uh, or um, you could actually speed up the rate of the reaction as well, so making it a little bit quicker. Um, also using renewable raw materials, so for example, um, the use of lactic acid um, is a renewable source of um, uh, to make a plastic, so for example you can make some, like polylactic acid from that as well uh, and that could be used to make um, carrier bags etc. Um, also um, you could increase the atom economy as well and, and in particular addition reactions uh, are very useful for this because um, you're using pretty much all of the atoms uh, to make the product so you have very little waste and the less waste you can have the better because if you're using all your molecules uh, to make your product then that's got to be a good thing. So addition reactions are actually really useful in this case, but they do have their downsides, as we'll come on to in a minute. Okay, so looking at the disposal of these things, there's three ways in which you could actually dispose of them. Um, burning, and you could recycle, and you can put them into landfill. Now, burning could be quite um, uh, a problem because when you burn plastics, they actually give off a lot of toxic chemicals, such as chlorine gas, now um, and hydrogen chloride gas, etc. So and um, these toxic gases are obviously not very useful, but you can actually, the, some of the gases, you can actually trap them. So say, for example, hydrogen chloride, uh, and you can dissolve them in water and you make hydrochloric acid. That company can then sell the hydrochloric acid and make some money from it. Now, um, obviously that's good for the company um, economically, but also for the environment, because hydrogen chloride is an acidic gas. If that gets into the atmosphere, that can dissolve to form acid rain, which can then have consequences um, uh, environmentally as well so it's quite a good thing that we can actually trap that and we can do that using um, scrubbers and chimneys etc. Uh, we can also by burning it we can actually make electricity and there's a lot of companies now that are starting to um, set up where they will take rubbish and um, certain types of rubbish and they will burn it, incinerate it and heat water and then that steam can then be used to uh, generate electricity so there is a, an environmental argument for burning as well uh, but obviously only certain types of rubbish can be burnt and some plastics actually um, it's very difficult to make use of the toxic gases that they can produce as well. Okay, looking at recycling, this is a, a, a obviously a very common thing you might find in the UK um, in particular. Um, recycling is a big initiative at the minute uh, and some plastics you can remold, you can um, remelt them down and make new ones, uh, however some plastics you can't. Uh, so for example um, some yogurt pots seem to be very difficult to recycle, mainly because when you melt them, they actually don't, uh, they're very difficult to reform, so they have to go into landfill, which we'll come on to in a minute. Um, but actually, some plastics can actually be cracked. Uh, you can actually break that molecule, that long chain uh, plastic molecule, uh, sorry, polymer, uh, and you can make shorter chain um, fuels, for example, and that could be quite useful. Again, you're, it's a way of not using crude oil for a fuel. Um, the problem is with recycling is um, the sorting process is quite expensive, so uh, just make sure you're aware of that as well. Okay, the last one is landfill. Uh, now you've got addition and condensation polymers, um, and there are videos on them um, under the uh, polymerization um, um, playlist, so um, if you want to have a look at them, just feel free. But um, addition polymers, uh, these are alkenes that are obviously added to make um, a polymer. These are generally unreactive because of the um, non-polar carbon-carbon bond uh, and that might be good for its use because um, they're generally, they'll last a lot longer so if you're making a chair for example, a plastic chair, you want it to last a long time. Um, however, they're non-biodegradable 
Um, it's very difficult for things like enzymes and bacteria to break down things like this. Um, on the other hand, condensation uh, polymers are generally biodegradable if you have a polar part in the molecule. So for example, you can see here we have a delta positive and a delta negative in our polyester, and same in polyamides as well, delta positive, delta negative. Uh, and that means that they um, can be broken down quite readily, um, still over a long period of time, uh, maybe 50, 60 years. Um, but nonetheless, they're a lot quicker than these, uh, which could take thousands of years to actually degrade. So these can be quite useful. But the problem is obviously with landfill is that uh, land's quite expensive uh, and landfill actually produces greenhouse gases. So when these things degrade, uh, bacteria produce methane as a byproduct and methane is a really potent uh, greenhouse gas as well. Um, there's one more thing as well. Um, another thing which we're looking at is actually the use of um, biodegradable, in particular if they've got a carbonyl group attached to them, uh, they can actually break down um, through light. Uh, and there's um, sticky plasters in particular on the market at the minute where you can peel off the top layer and allow the lights to be exposed, um, uh, allow the plasters to be exposed to sunlight and UV. Uh, UV can actually break down that resin that sticks to your skin and then it means the plaster can peel off uh, a lot better, especially if you've got a lot of hairs like me, um, when it actually hurts, when you, well it can hurt when you pull it off, when you pull the plaster off. So this is a, a way in which um, we're making polymers which actually degrade under the um, under UV. And it's an area of chemistry that's um, probably going to expand quite rapidly in the future uh, as a way of tackling um, the green issues to do with plastics. But you do need to know these for the exams, pros and cons, um, you know, to make sure you know them, um, especially the recycling one, because it can be quite difficult to uh, think of a disadvantage of recycling, but it is quite an expensive process. But um, that's it. Hope it helps. Bye.